appreciate everybody coming out. Um, another exciting day. Uh, we increased our signees to 21 today. Um, really excited about the group of guys that we signed. Uh, just to touch on that real quick, uh, signed Dayton Wade, a receiver out of Georgia. He was a 4A player of the year in Georgia this past season. Really excited about him. Signed a defensive end, Celestin Haba. Uh, he's a lead pass rusher out of junior college. Uh, led the Juco and sacks last year. Um, Wes Dorsey, an offensive tackle out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Big, long tackle. Has tremendous upside. Um, really looking forward to getting him here. And then uh, we had an addition of Corey Munson, the kicker out of Georgia, who uh, I'm really, really excited about. Uh, big, strong leg kid. Uh, can boot it really well. So those are the four guys that we're announcing today. Um, I left a couple spots open on purpose. I think uh, recruiting's changing a little bit. We, we're in the portal uh, time and age where guys are transferring and those kind of things. So I always want to save a couple spots. So. We're going to save those spots for later in the spring and uh, kind of see what happens in that area. But overall, really excited about this class. If you break it down by position, um, we were around five receivers, four defensive linemen, four alignment, um, four defensive backs, two specialists, and one tight end. And I really felt like between the first signing period and the second signing period, we really met our needs. Um, a lot of these guys are already here. 11 of these guys are already in school here. They've been training over the past couple weeks. Um, these guys are doing a great job. I think they'll help us early next year. And uh, so it's exciting time and uh, really looking forward to, to working with these guys. With that being said, any questions? I know you said you wanted to add difference makers, I guess, adding the leading sack. Got yeah, most sacks in all junior college at the counts in that category, right? No question. I think, you know, in this league, it, I've said it before, say it again, it's an offensive-driven league. Uh, you got to be able to get to the to the quarterback, um, and Celestin will do that for us. He does a great job rushing the passer. He'll be a, a great addition to our other ends. I think, you know, we, we have some pretty good guys in that area already as well. So I'm excited about him. and. I think we address the needs in our skill positions, you know, particularly receiver. Uh, we love to throw the ball here. Uh, we need some guys that can go get it. And uh, so I think with the addition of, of the receivers that we signed, five total, it'll it'll be really good for us. So um, looking forward to it. Is he like a, is he a, more like a hand in the dirt defensive lineman, or can you stand him up and do? Some you can do both. Up? Yeah, I mean he's uh, he's he's done both in junior college. Um, you, whatever. Whatever he, he likes the best, that's probably what we'll do. I think he's a good third down pass rusher, and uh, so we'll uh, we'll see what fits his his skill trait the best. Do you feel like you're a solid guy at the center position now, following this recruiting class? I do. I really do. Um, if you look at it across the board, we're talking about that as a staff today. Um, there's not really a huge area of need now. Is there? There's always going to be areas where you'd like to add some more talent to it. But we have a great foundation. I really feel good about where we're at. Um, you know, I think we've met all our needs in this class. How do you see Corey Munson fitting into the team next year? I think he's a guy that will compete early. Um, you know, he has a huge leg. Uh, you know, I watched watching him this past season, all the kicks he made. I mean, don't hold me to it, but I think he made a 52-yarder, a 47-yarder in, in high school. That says a lot. You so I think he's a guy that comes in early and, and really does a good job competing and trying to win the job. How much does it help getting those 11 guys in earlier to kind of acclimate not only to Western, but just your playbook, play style, with their new teammates? I think it's huge. Um, and those guys have done a great job already. I mean, I was talking to Coach Bellcamp, and he's singing their praises, saying, man, this group is a, is a different group. They're working really hard. Pushing our veterans, you know, to make those guys work harder as well. Um, our veterans have done a great job of embracing those guys and bringing them along as well. Uh, so, you know, I think it'll be interesting when we hit spring ball to see, you know, who can compete early and try to go win a job. But, um, you know, I, w I hope we can do that every year, to be quite honest with you. That's kind of the way recruiting's going. I think guys are graduating earlier now and you're getting the transfer guys and those kind of things. So, um, that's what we'll try to work towards each year. What position groups will you be looking to add to with those extra few spots you said you had open? You know, 
I, I use it as the best available term. I really do. It, it's not one particular position. I think anytime you can get a really good player, you know, you, you go ahead and pull the trigger and, and take that guy. Um, I love the fact too that now you can scholarship guys that even if they're not graduates, you know, they even if they have to sit, you know, you may be able to say, hey, he's worth taking. Let him sit a year and then you know come compete the following year. Um, so I'm not going to pinpoint one particular area but uh, we'll probably just take the best available in those positions. But we will be looking throughout spring to, to see who, who does come available. You have three scholarship quarterbacks right now. Is that the number that you expect to go into the season with? Or? Not necessarily. Um, you never know how that's going to play. Um, if my ideal world is to have four to five, you know, quarterback position will be a position we evaluate for sure, you know, coming out of spring to see if there's anybody that's worthy of us trying to get. Um, so we'll be keying on that position as well, as long as and, and, and all the other positions too. Coach, uh, I know it's just been an absolute whirlwind for you, but since I visited with you a few times, I, I go back to November 27th, the day you were hired, and I'm sure you're sitting there going, "Okay, I got to hit the ground running. My staff's got to hit the ground running. Recruiting. I got to get a staff." Back then, when you were thinking of best case scenario, good case scenario or bad case scenario as far as recruiting, you sit here today, did it go as well as you expected or even better than expected? It was better than expected. I, I, I had an advantage, number one. I think the previous staff, I, my hat's off to them. I think they did a nice job recruiting. And so I thought there was some commitments already there that were, were good commitments that we needed to keep. Um, we added our, you know, our guys to that. Um, it went seamless. I think the, you know, with our staff, current staff that we were able to hire and hire them so fast, we were able to get guys on the road very quickly to, you know, just to establish that consistency, you know, that, you know, things aren't up in the air. Um, that helped a lot. So it went a lot better than what I expected it to be. I'm really happy where we are today with this class. If you could only pick one word to describe this group right now, one word to describe them. And I, just, I know it's going to be a good word. What would that word be? For for our team or for this signing class? This signing class. Oh, one word for this signing class. Um, future. How about that? Future. Okay. You put me on the spot there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. It's okay. That's okay. Having some staff turnover the last few weeks, is that just something you kind of expect nowadays with the way that, yeah. you know, how long the carousel goes? Yeah. I think, you know, in the coaching world today, there's kind of, it's kind of like recruiting. There's two cycles. There's right after the season, and then it kind of dies down for the holidays, and then there's this whole January, February, sometimes even March period where, you know, you get those phone calls and, and people, you know, are saying, hey, I'm, I'd love to talk to this guy. We, uh, we did have two coaches leave us. I think it says a lot about our staff that those guys were recruited off our staff, that, you know, that they were wanted. Um, you know, going into this job, Knowing the dynamics of how the coaching world works, I plan for that. Um, there's all, I will always have people in place that work in-house for us that aren't the 10 full-time guys, but they're kind of the next in-line guys. Um, did that on purpose for these exact situations. And, um, you know, the first one that, you know, Zach Langford, who we announced as our new tight ends coach. I've worked with Zach twice now. He actually played for me at UAB. Um, you know, Zach joined our staff as an off the coaching role with me knowing at some point in time I would like to get him involved with the staff and be a part of the 10. Um, and it just so happened to work out really fast for him. So that was easy. The next one was Garrett Sachere. Um, I've always tried to hire this guy, to be honest with you, even, you know, when I was a coordinator and those kind of things. And it just didn't work out. And so the timing was perfect. Uh, when Coach Hardesty left, that you know, when I called him, he you know he said, "Brother, I know you have called me a couple times, and it didn't work out, but uh, you know I was glad it, it did this time, so the timing was right." So I think we we really helped ourselves in both those positions, and uh, love our staff. I think we got an extremely strong staff. I think they're great educator, great educators, great coaches, and they'll be good for our team. What was it about Zach when he played for UAB that you identified that you thought he might make? It? Well, I think number one, he's he's got a he's got a great edge to him. To be honest with you, uh, when he was on the field, you you know he was a guy 
guy that got after you pretty good. He can flip a switch, you know. I think that's that's important. Um, he's a good guy in the classroom. He's a good teacher, you know. As a player, I could tell when we were coaching him, he picked up things, retained things well. Uh, he became an older player and started to actually coach the younger players. So you could tell right away that he was going to be a good coach. And then when he decided to be a coach, you know, he started out as a graduate assistant, worked extremely hard, worked in recruiting, was a great recruiter, uh, came here to Western Kentucky in a kind of a quality control position, did a great job. So he kept moving up, moving up, moving up. Uh, went down to Montgomery, had was an offensive line coach down there, um, had his own group, excelled doing that. So, um, you know, he's just done a great job over the years of, of every role he's been in. He's really mastered a role and excelled in it. Anything else? Tyson, can I ask you one more sure. thing? Um, again, just covering football with, with the early signing period and this signing period, and then you talked about the transfer situation. You've been around the game for a while. I know recruiting is recruiting, but boy, it certainly feels different do it for a living is it different yeah you know the recruiting portal came available I think it was October 2018 this past year um, it's going to change recruiting as we know it it's going to just it's going to be a major part of, of everybody from power five I mean just across the board college football um, and I think people are smart to position themselves to be able to take advantage of it so yeah I think we're going to see start to see a trend moving more and more into that I don't want to say it's becoming like the NFL with free agency, but it does have a touch and a flair of that.